All right, as you can see, I am not alone today. I have a friend with me. Hey, guys. It's, this is Matthew Banks, a good friend of mine, and we're doing bassoons today. I know, I'm a bassoonist. I never talk about bassoon on this channel. Uh, but we've got two very different bassoons today. Here's my normal bassoon, and let's play Granger. Uh, so I'll play a little bit, then you play a little bit, and we'll join at the end. First phrase, second phrase, ending. Sounds good. Notice that we sound really different from one another. It's not that we're completely different players. I mean, we're different players, of course, but we're using completely different instruments. In fact, our instruments are about as far from one another as you can get. I have a modern heckle system made by Wolf um, with as many modern things as you can put on it, including keyboard found on no other bassoon in the world. Matt here, well, why don't you tell him about your instrument? So I am playing on a uh, Buffet Crampon French bassoon manufactured by Buffet in 1910. It is not a fully modern French bassoon. It lacks a high D key and a couple of other trill keys, but it is functional. So our bassoons are about 100 years uh, apart from one another. Mine's 2006. His is 1910. 1910. And so... We have two completely different systems of bassoon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my bassoon around and we're going to show the left hand thumb keys on my instrument. And Matt will do the same on his instrument. And they don't even look the same. What's going on here? two different schools of bassoon. The the French bassoon that Matt has is basically the modern development of the old classical system bassoon. This is not dissimilar to what Mozart would have seen, just some more modern keys. My bassoon, and the bassoon that pretty much everybody else around the world knows, is a departure from this. So that I just started mowing. Uh, so that they're just, you know, really very, very different instruments. Um, to give um, a demonstration, let's play a, a duet. And we'll just open it up here. Can you see from here? Yes. All right. Um, oh, Beaumartier. I like Beaumartier. Um, does that look good to you? Yes. And... You want to take first or second part? I'll take second part for now. Second part? Okay. So I'll play first part. One, two. <gasps> switch parts now because sure. the French bassoon actually works better on the upper part. It doesn't even sound really like two bassoons at some time because they're, they're so different than one another. In fact, if I picked up his instrument and tried to play it, I can't. I, you know, I've got a master's in bassoon performance. I can't play this thing. It takes uh, months or years to really switch over to play the different system. Now, Matt, you know, of course, can play the German system because you know, any bassoonist in America can play it. But how long have you been playing this thing? 
I have had it for about three months, and I have been practicing a lot to try to get the basics down. Yeah, in fact, uh, just a couple days ago, he gave what may be the first ever jazz French bassoon recital. So it's uh, kind of fun, isn't it? Absolutely. And, and I'm, I love the sound of it. Uh, why don't you play um, something? Why don't you play um, some, some Duke that you played the other night? Sure. <laughs> Actually, it's so much more uh, jazzy than, than the the German bassoon sound. So, really, uh, uh, it's totally different different beast, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, and we just uh, recorded a, a podcast for it, and I will be making an announcement on the channel soon about that because I'm going to be launching a brand new uh, band nerd podcast. So, we'll, uh, stay tuned for that. But, Matt, <laughs> fun little thing, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, stay tuned for podcasts, and thanks for Matt for stopping by and the French bassoon.